Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and today I want to take a look at an extension that I've been using a lot lately and getting a ton of value from, Transmuter. Okay, so uh, Transmuter is an import tool that helps you to simplify imported meshes, but it kind of goes beyond that and does some work with proxying and, well, let's just hop in and I'll show you what it is and how it works. Okay, so we'll throw in a link, of course, to this page, but um, there is, it's a listing page. So a listing page on Extension Warehouse means that you can't actually get the extension from here. You do have to go to the site. So there's a link to it right here, but um, it is compatible with all major versions of SketchUp. Um, and it is worth every penny it is a paid extension but worth it if you do any importing of any of these file types right here um, the cool part about this tool is that it simplifies the process of simplifying models that's that's probably what they should have up here as a tagline let's go ahead and run it and see how it works so when I'm going to start using this is right, right. So at whatever point you want to import, you don't have to do this um, like in a separate model. I just happen to have an empty model open here. I'm going to go up to extensions and transmuter and I'm going to say import model. It's going to pop up with a little UI and ask me what file I want to import. So it's going to look for and automatically show 3DS, DAE, FBX, OBJ, and STL files. There's also an option in here for uh, bringing in files Megascan. This is not something I'm set up to use, but it does look pretty exciting to be able to pull scan data directly, and that's that's pretty awesome. You can check out their site for a little more information on that. But right now, I'm just gonna say browse file, and I'm gonna grab this uh, minifig file that I have on my desktop, and I'm gonna say open that. So here's the cool part. So super quick, so, I mean, what are the things you use a tool like this for is because the information you're importing is too heavy. So I'm importing a model that has too many pieces and when I bring in SketchUp, it slows SketchUp down or something like that. But the initial preview screen in here happens real quick, pops right up. So when it brings this in, it does have a scale figure in here. Hey, um, so you can see, okay, is my model coming in about the right size? So this tool doesn't have any, I, it is just a preview, that's all it's intended to be, but I can see that this is about the size of a minifig compared to a foot. That's good. One of the cool things I liked about this right off the bat was this up axis. So what I can do is you can see he's laying on his back right now. If I go to my up axis and change it to Y plus, now he's standing up. Um, this is a thing, I just seem to run into this a lot. Imported files just have a different axis set up than I'm expecting and that is a super nice easy way to to fix that of course the other thing is right here so there's some there's some other options in here where i can scale multiply make it bigger smaller um, or convert what units it comes in as that's great stuff that is really cool things um, also the option to turn smoothing on and off i also come over here to the visually and and say show edges so you can see with show edges this thing that looks like it's super smooth actually shows all these faces and all these edges it's going to be importing. I found show edges, having that turned on was super helpful for importing geometry. But here is it. Th this is the big one. Like of, of all these things, so the stats tells you how many triangles it is, how big it is, um, good stuff. But this little slider right here, this is the, the stuff that it's all, make, this, this is what it's for. So if I grab this and I start just sliding it down, let's go to, I don't know, let's go like 25% down. Look at the difference in triangles. So right off the bat, just, just that little bit went from over 9,000 triangles, 9,000 faces down to just 6,000. And really, if I turn show edges off, I don't see a discernible difference. So if I keep going there, let's go to about 50%. Still, I mean, I still challenge to see exactly where I'm losing discernible geometry, especially for something this small, right? So this little mini figure guy is gonna be just, you know, not not a high quality piece or anything. Um, it's cool to drop it down. Look how much I dropped it. That's almost a third of the n amount of geometry. And really I can't 
tell a huge difference between this and this. Obviously, there, there's some difference. And if I if I abuse it, so I come all the way over here, um, yeah, eventually it gets to too few triangles and not that useful of a model. So that's not going to be awesome. But I can bring it up a little bit, a little bit more. So th this could be your, your workflow. I could start all the way at the bottom and work my way up until I get all the important geometry in, like his feet and his head being round. So that seems to be about 80%. Um, and I can play with that and create much more compact files. This is the power that I've gotten out of Transmuter, is that ability to take my file and make it, okay, yeah, I would have no question what this thing is if I imported it. The other thing you'll see it is importing here is, if I show these edges, um, this file had this, not, not a material map, but as actual colors on triangles. So that's how those, those faces are in commit. So if I click materials, it's going to tell me that I have these other colors in here, which are just coloring triangles. Um, another option down here that is available is exporting this back out as a proxy, which is going to give you, you know, a lower lower quality proxy to actually work within SketchUp, but then data in there to, to render it properly as the higher um, quality mesh in V-Ray, Thea, or Enscape, which is really cool. So again, if you're importing other data that is not important to SketchUp, well, not important to the modeling process, I'm thinking plants, cars, people, um, having a box or a low poly version inside SketchUp, but then still being to render high, high, high quality is super important. So at this point, once I'm good, okay, I've got this to the, I've got this, you know, I've knocked off 7,000 faces and it still looks good. I'm going to go ahead and hit transmute. So this is a neat thing that it does. I really like this. In addition to importing this, which we'll see in just a second, it also asks, if I want to save this out as a separate SKP, this is huge. This is super nice because there's been several times where I have, you know, used it to imported some geometry, something like that, converted it or modified it. And then it's just in that model by having this external SKP file. If something does go wrong with importing, if I come back and need to use this again, I just have the SketchUp file to work with. I don't have to go through the transmute process again. There's no chance that I'm going to uh, lose it, anything like that. Well, I could still lose it if I tried, but it gives me this file externally, which is super cool. I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. And like I said, it is going to save that SKP file out, but then it's also going to allow me to place it. It's gonna to connect to my cursor, just like it would with a normal component and place it right here. When it imports that, it does import it and create a component and it names the component whatever the file that it imported was named. So you can see on here, the, the hiding is, or the softening is not perfect. So I may want to come in here and maybe like, you know, just come in and grab some of this geometry and soften smooth and, and maybe figure out where the, where the sweet spot is for that. Maybe do a little bit of manual, but overall, this is a much tighter model than what I would have initially imported and uh, yeah, that just looked so much better, so much lighter and easier than the file I would have originally imported if I hadn't been using Transmuter. So like I was saying, if you do any kind of importing of files, if there, there are those other file types or even SKP files, you can use this on files you've downloaded from 3D Warehouse. Any of that kind of work, this is gonna save you time. Manually going through and optimizing meshes is not a fun process. Being able to just move a slider and, and figure out what's the, the, the key amount of reduction to do, much easier. If it's something you do regularly, you need to check out Transmuter. If you haven't already, please like this video and you should probably subscribe. We create several videos each and every week. You'd be notified of them when they release if you subscribe. Most importantly though, please leave us a comment down below. Have you tried Transmuter? What do you think of it? We like making these videos a lot, but we like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.